I'm glad that somebody is here. I see we have several people uh, here in my first YouTube live video. After 15 years, I've literally had this uh, YouTube page, or I should say channel, station. I'm not sure exactly what you call it, but I've had this, this whole uh, YouTube channel for nearly 15 years. And this is like literally my first my first uh, time actually really doing something with it because, you know, when I first got started uh, on YouTube, I it, actually YouTube was a way for me to upload my old acting videos, my old stuff from back in the days. So uh, because at that time they didn't, you know, they didn't really have any streaming stuff that you can save, you know, your, your videos to home videos. So what I was doing is I uploaded like 13 of, of episodes, just different television things that I did when I was a little boy and, you know, in acting or what have you, just, just maybe 12 or stuff from the Fresh Prince, just episode, episodic stuff, some family matter stuff, different stroke stuff, just, you know, and I was taking that from a VHS machine, right? And just uploading it, you know, to, uh, to YouTube. So that's how I actually got on YouTube. I was actually trying to save video. I was taking it from my garage and just uploading it just in case maybe fire drop a bit, something like that. Uh, and we, um, and I would have lost that video, but now, you know, because of YouTube, you can find that stuff, you know, on YouTube anyway, which is great. And I think YouTube is just fabulous. And I've noticed that I've had a lot of people, uh, seeing all the stuff that I uploaded like 12, 13 years ago, you know, so that's wonderful. Now, as far as me being on YouTube, never had a desire to be on YouTube, never had a desire to, to, to really have anything to do with it, you know, but now that I turned 50, I turned 50 on March 4th. I am so excited. And when I turned 50, something just changed in me. I felt like, you know, um, I, I want to share more about what just my life. A lot of people think maybe, you know, have you, are you still acting? Why aren't you acting anymore? Uh, there's a lot of people who ask me questions as far as like, can you do interviews? And no, I have not been acting. I was going to say no, not to the, to the doing the interview part, but no to, I haven't been acting. I haven't been acting since 2008. So a lot of people don't know that. And so I thought YouTube uh, would be a way uh, to be able to share you know, in, you know, on what's been going on with me. I have a gift of gab in case you just don't know yet. Uh, I had blogs for many years. Uh, back in 2004, I started blogging because just as much as I write, I talk. But back then from 2004 to about 2000, maybe 2009, I was a big time blogger. I had blogs galore. I had over a hundred different domain names. I had a lot of celebrity blogs, what they call, I guess, fan pages or fan blogs or what have you. I started off with my own, ShavarRoss.com at the time. And then from there, I um, just started just buying up blogs. And the reason why I started buying up blogs was because a lot of my celebrity friends, they didn't have their domain names. So people like Gary Coleman, Todd Bridges, they didn't really have like a web presence, but I was totally into the internet back then. And so uh, I found out that a lot of those, uh, when I would search for my friends like GaryComan.net and, and just different, just actors and actresses, when I would type it in to see wh what kind of website they had, it would go to porn sites. So that, <laughs> it would go to porn sites. And, and I don't even think they knew about what was going on you know, with those, uh, you know, with their sites or what have you, but I started purchasing them back. <laughs> so I had a hundred different domain names uh, that I just had in my account, in my GoDaddy account and didn't have know what to do with them. I already had my blog on my, with my own name, Shabar Ross, but, um, and I was just talking about celebrity, kind of like a gossip blog back in those days, 2004. Well, not 2004, 2000, I would say 2008, 2009, maybe 2006 or so. Not exactly sure, but those blogs were really popular. And so I had like a million people coming to my blogs. I had different writers uh, that I had hired to help me write on my blog and other blogs. I had a blog called uh, Former Child Stars. Uh, I had a site called uh, Black Thespian. It was about black actors and, and kind of like what's the goings on 
of what was, you know, what's happening in the in the industry with uh, black actors, African American actors, or what have you. But um, it was fun. I had another site called Good Lord. Goodlaw.com was kind of like a, a fun type of blog. So every time we wrote something, it would make you say, good Lord, you know, kind of like Arsenio would make things that make you go, hmm, this was like, you know, good Lord, things that make you say, good Lord. And so um, I did that for a while and I became very popular with these blogs. So I had maybe about 30 different blogs going on simultaneously with each blog, uh, basically, uh, going for about maybe 15 posts a day. So it was like a business for me through Google AdSense and it was great. I loved it. I love to write. I love to talk. I love to, you know, chat about other people. Let me put my glasses on because I see maybe some people may be coming in or you might have a question or something like that. But yeah, it was it was fun uh, with that. And I did that for about four years. And I just thought I just had arrived because, you know, I was making money. Uh, the blogs were doing well. People were coming to to the blogs and and clicking on ads and all that type of stuff. And that's how I was I would get paid. What made this so interesting? I should say um, uh, what made it like what got me hooked? I should say on on the whole blogging thing was when on the site that I had the blog called Good Lord Things That Make You You Know uh, Say Good Lord. This was sometime right around the time when Osama bin Laden, okay, he they captured him and he was killed. Um, and during that time, people didn't know I was like such into blogging that back in those days you would want to, it was easy to be able to just type something in, get a news story up or get a blog up, a post up and actually be right there on top of the, the Google search engines. So what happened with me was that I was the first, the news broke. Everybody was trying to break the news. And as soon as I heard Osama bin Laden captured, okay, he was captured and then killed. I went straight, straight to the internet because I wanted to blog it because whoever was the one to get the post or the story, I should say, on that first, that first page or even on the first link, you know, because everybody knew everybody was going to be typing it in, you know, all of the bloggers knew that. So I was getting ready to do a blog post. Osama bin Laden dies, capture it, you know, CNN. And of course, all the bigger companies were covering it. But the first thing that I did was I actually went to uh, to the images in Google to find out if anybody had posted a picture. This was like right when they broke the story, right when they broke it. You know, bloggers back then, you you had to get the story because that would mean more people coming to your website. And if more people came to your website, they would have the tendency basically to click on the other ads. OK, so that's what I was doing back in 2006 or seven through or eight somewhere. It was four. I just know it was four years. Right. So anyway, I looked on the, the image section and I saw, oh, my goodness. I saw a picture and it looked like it, it was Osama bin Laden. OK. And it looked like he was all shot up. And I was like, who posted this? I looked Google, Google images and I saved it really quickly. Right. And then I refreshed the page to, because I was hoping that somebody else would put things up to more pictures so I can post it to good Lord. And then um, so what happened was um, I, I refreshed the page and I, I didn't see it. I didn't even see the picture that I had downloaded anymore. And I'm like, what was that about? I know it was from a, an education site, like a, it came, the picture I noticed with that when I downloaded, it came from a, a college university. So I didn't know what it was or how they got the picture, but it looked like it was Osama bin Laden, like shot up. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I ran and told my wife, cause I was so into blogging. I had to be the first to everything, right? And so um, when I uh, downloaded that picture, I put went to my blog at the time called Good Lord, uh, G-O-O-O-D. Oh, did I say three O's? Okay, G O O D Lord L A W D uh, dot com, and I literally ran and took that picture and I posted it. Osama bin Laden death picture. You know, this is this is me on the internet. This is like my whole internet life here. This is what I've been doing for like now. It's been like I don't know, maybe. Well, I've been an eBay seller since two thousand two, so that'll tell you something. That's like eighteen years that I've been just doing stuff on the internet. I absolutely love, 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 love. And I'll get to questions in a second, but I love the internet. I love it. But anyway, when I posted uh, Osama bin Laden death picture, um, you know, um, 
I ended up number one. And I shouldn't laugh because, you know, to be honest with you, it was a very serious situation at the time. Um, and I actually, the blog, the picture later on, I would get, I, the whole site got ridiculed for posting it. But nevertheless, it was literally on the top page of Google. And so I ended up having like just thousands of people thinking, and that was Osama bin Laden. And it was just such a rush because people were coming to the site. My website kept going down. I had to call up my internet uh, service provider and and uh, the hosting company, I should say, and to get that thing back up. And I had to pay extra money just to keep it going. I had to get a virtual, uh, a different type of server. And uh, it was just a rush. But at the same time, everybody thought, then I started getting, then I got scared, right? All of a sudden I started seeing the picture that I had posted popping up on like Iranian t Iranian TV. That's when I started getting scared. I was like, oh, and they were like, oh, my you know, they were talking about this, and it was like, oh, him and just, oh my goodness. And I got nervous. And you can still to this day search like Osama bin Laden death photo, and you'll see it like on a station, like somewhere in either Iran or Iraq. I wasn't sure if it was Pakistan, but it was. <laughs> and I got, oh, I got so nervous. And I eventually, of course. Uh, I took the post down, but he uh, because we found out it wasn't him. <laughs> it wasn't even him. Somebody had took a, did some Photoshop, and and everybody started the post. The picture that I put up there was him, but it wasn't even him. Somebody photoshopped it that quick, or maybe they had it ready. I don't know, but put it, put the Osama bin Laden post uh, post up, and they took it down. They must have felt guilty or something. But when before they took it down, I saved it and I blasted it to the world. That was when I was that I broke the internet. You know how people break the internet, and then when that happened, I mean, not that we should glorify, you know, death or Osama bin Laden, but at that time it was all about blogs and trying to post something quick, you know. And like I said, I took it down, but <clears throat> that was something. And since then, it's just been many, many, many different times where I've had posts from different blog posts uh, from the many blogs that I had. Um, to uh to kind of break the internet except nobody knew it was me people were like man when you want to do next tv episode it was that type of thing you know so that's a little bit of an introduction to 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 uh, just a little bit of, of a touch of how i got started or not really how i got started but what got me in uh to uh being on the internet and what led me here because um it's been a wonderful ride um most of my work is done online and so now that i'm 50 i'm 50 oh let me I'm, okay let me stop for a moment put my spectacles on i see our people coming in hello i want to say welcome to my first live this is my first youtube live presentation channel and I have so much to share with you guys. I have so much to, oh, thank you for wishing me a happy birthday. March 4th was my birthday, yay. I think Emmanuel Lewis's birthday is, remember little Webster? His birthday is today, I think, or yesterday, I'm not sure. But a little Emmanuel Lewis and all my friends from back in the days, we all getting up there. I got gray hairs and uh, I was getting ready. Um, another reason why you never really saw me like do anything on YouTube or what have you is because I was just self-conscious about myself. I don't, I don't know. It's like when I was a kid, that was cute. I love, love, love everything, you know, that I did as an actor when I was a, when I was a child, but seeing myself get older, I don't know. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't deal. I couldn't deal. I saw like how hard Gary and other actors, the, the life that they had, the they were typecast and all this type of thing. Not that I really was, you know, so I was able to break out into other things. Thank God, because I was always guest starring on those, on those different shows. So I never was like, you know, people remember me as Gary Coleman's best friend or what have you in other shows, but it was never like, oh, that's him. You know, you're cursed, the, the curse of different shows. I was always doing other little stuff. So that helped me, but at the same time, I never came to California to be an actor, you know? So that was the main thing with me. I never came to California to be an actor. I came to California to visit my father. My dad was the actor. He was with William Morris and he loved acting. He wanted to see his name in lights. I was seven years old. My parents were, were divorced and, or not divorced yet. Yeah, they were actually separated at that time, way back before some of y'all was born. All right. And so I came to visit my dad and he would, I mean, he would, this is back in the days when you had to tap dance and sing and Broadway type stuff. He was so into it. I'd be 
you yeah. know, I'd be um, sleep. And I was like eight years old. I actually came to visit my dad during Christmas, during my school's Christmas uh, vacation. And he, you know, I'd be waking up 12 o'clock in the morning and he's singing, Maria, Maria, I just met a girl named Maria. I'm like, what is this brother doing? He ain't really into it. Then he get his tap shoes and like, oh, man, I got to get my tap out of the tap class. I'm like, dang, this brother, he ain't playing. But my dad was the actor. OK, and bless his heart. He's no longer with us. Uh, passed away, died of a heart attack at just 38 years old. And so when he passed away, that was kind of like, you know, for me, because I ended up getting discovered, uh, you know, at a play with him and Lawrence Hilton Jacobs. And so maybe I'll do a, a video about how I got started. I don't want to, you know, everything that you see, my energy that you see me, uh, how I'm how I am like this now. I'm like this pretty much all the time. And that's another reason why I'm happy to be right here on YouTube, because I get to share it with other people. You know, I'm always talking my wife's ears off, my daughter's ears off and. And 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 they're so used to me, but it's just because I'm excited about life. I'm excited about you know uh, everything that I've gone through and been through. You know, they say that you can't have a testimony unless you've been through some tests. And I have been through a lot in my life, just as well as maybe some of you. And maybe we'll talk about some things. But I love to to just help people. I love to just instill encouragement into people, uh, instill love because there's a lot, there's a lot of people out out now that are literally depressed about a lot of different things. And so I have a lot to say, and I hope you don't mind. Let me look at some questions and see if anybody has any questions. And we'll see how long uh, this is going to go today. But um, I'm excited. I'm glad that somebody visited me. Uh, I thought I was going to be talking to myself like I normally do. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so, hey, Shabar, thanks for doing this. Hey, Brett, how you doing? I was curious if you have any stories about filming Friday the 13th Part 5. I guess I should say, yes, I have all kind of stories. One of the, my favorite stories. Oh, let me know because I can. I got. Don't worry. I work on the lights. I'm working on my set design and everything like that. I'm going to get going with this thing here. But uh, I do have one story that I'll share really quickly. We were. Uh, oh, by the way, I got to get. I got to start doing some push ups. My goodness. I got man boobs now and everything. Y'all close your eyes. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just excited, you guys. I'm excited that everybody's, uh, or at least some people are visiting me today. Uh, but yeah, we filmed uh, Friday the 13th on Mulholland Drive, right on that area, like in the Hollywood Hills. We did a little bit of filming in Camarillo, California. This is actually where they had a mental institution. I think it was, uh, I don't know if it was Ronald Reagan Mental Health Institution. I'm not sure. But just outside of Camarillo, this was in 1985-ish. <laughs> Uh, and I was in a hotel filming Friday the 13th uh, with my then double, the guy who was actually my my double for the movie. He did a lot of the running scenes and what have you. But I had fell asleep. We had filming the next day. And all of a sudden I heard this flickering like in, in my ear and I didn't know what it was. I was sleeping. I woke up. I was just, all I heard kept hearing was like. <laughs> and I'm like, what is this in my ear? And I woke up. I was 14 years old. And I was like, what is this in my ear? And I went to, to, to my buddy double. He was, we were, we was uh, in the same hotel room. And, and I was like, something's in my ear. I don't know what it is. It's like, brrr, it just kept, brrr, it just kept doing that. Like, brrr, and I'm like, what is this? And I thought I was going crazy. Cause I'm like, just flickering. And I didn't know what it was. And I, and, and I said, I don't know. I'm hearing things. Something is in my ear. And, and every time I went like this, like to try to get it out, I couldn't feel anything. So I didn't understand what was going on. I was like going like this, like, what is this in my ear? And I was like looking and stuff. <laughs> it was like still there. And it was like flickering. So then uh, my buddy, he said, you know, maybe we need to go to the bathtub. Just ring your, put your ear inside the bathtub. So it was late. After about trying to, two hours of trying to go back to sleep and the flickering, I finally got to the bathtub. And then when I, um, you know, ran the water on my um on, in my ear at the bathtub in in the, in the in the hotel room. Out came a pregnant roach. <laughs> out came a pregnant roach with wings. Okay, <laughs> so and that thing came out, and I was like, oh my god! And it was like dying or something. And it was a big old. I don't know if you ever seen it. You probably seen it before. But it's like uh you know this big long. It had a big long body with some white, and it was a pregnant. And and that was this one. You talking about being scared of Friday the Thirteenth? Like forget Friday the Thirteenth. I was scared of that 
pregnant wing roach. That's what got me uh, uh, scared. But that's one incident. First thing that I remember about Friday the 13th, a little story. I got plenty of stories. I got all kinds of stories I'd love to share with you guys. But uh, let me know if you have. Oh, hell, how did from Texas? Don't mess with Texas. Is that my Whataburger lady friend? I didn't tell you. Um, I just call her uh, Avery. I just know she loves baseball. I'm not going to say any names. I've done that before and people got embarrassed. So I said, well, let me not call like real names out. I just had to read the uh, the uh, the YouTube, uh, uh, I guess the rules or something. And it said, don't give out where you live. Because knowing me, I'll probably tell everybody, oh, just come to my house. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, uh, what, what was I going to say with the, um, the um, Avery? Oh, yeah. We, my wife and I, my family and I actually lived in Oklahoma for one year. My wife's from Oklahoma. And so we almost moved to Texas. We were going to either move to Dallas or Austin. But around that time, there was a place called Whataburger. And I asked my wife, I said, what in the world is Whataburger? What is this place? You know, and I had never heard of that. Some people have never heard of In-N-Out. We have In-N-Out here. Um, and I don't, I don't care for In-N-Out. Them, but um, and then she um, was like, What a burger, you never heard of water, you gotta try one. And I try water burger. I say, I don't know why I say what like water, it's what a burger, but I say water, like water, like New York. Oh, give me some water. I say water burger. But that place was the best. That was the thing I missed about Oklahoma. It's like what a burger. So uh that's that's a wonderful place. And I got I don't know, I don't think we have one here in California, but it's gonna be interesting to see if they start branching off this way because I'll surely have some more. Ah, let me see if I can go to the next question. But I'm glad you guys are visiting me. I just want to say thank you for keeping me company uh during my first uh, YouTube uh live session. I would like to do this every week because I would like to actually get deep into other topics and talk about other things that, you know, maybe will help you, uh, will uh, maybe change some lives. You know, I think I, at least from what people tell me, um, you know, I'm good at encouraging people and I'm good at touching people's lives. I want to touch people's lives. I want to change people's lives. I want to encourage you to be the best at whatever it is that you want to be. Maybe you're already there. Maybe you're not. But either way, I'll be switching up and talking about a variety, a variety of things uh, that are interesting to me that um, I just like to share to the world. So anyway, let me see what else we got here. Somebody said that's nasty. Yes, it is. Yes, that was nasty. <laughs> uh, OK, let me see if I have a see. If, uh, yeah. Ask away. This is the time to ask me anything. Um, you know, I see people emailing me and they want to, you know, they want to know if I. Uh, I'm open for interviews and stuff. And I'm, you know, to be honest with you, I, I'm not really uh, interested in doing that. Um, at one time, that's all I did was interviews. But, you know, I'm online all the time. If you shoot me an email, I can answer some questions. But we have this YouTube place now. This is what I'm excited about. All right. So let me see if I can read this. This is my first time reading this. And this is good. Thanks for keeping me company because this is going to help me. I'd like to present some videos to, I'll probably be doing a little little short skits and, and, you know, not necessarily with me in it, but I would like to somehow um, just share what's going on with my life. It's, it, this is, I guess, why they call it YouTube. I'm excited because it reminds me of like, almost like being back, back in the days on television, you know, so this is kind of fun for me to be back here. All right. So, um, okay. Somebody said Friday the 13th is my favorite of the series. Uh, one of my favorite child actors as a kid growing up in the 1970s, 80s. Yeah, I came in uh, 1979. It was Super Bowl Sunday when I arrived, and that was a great time. So just about, um, I think it was, was it 19? I think 1979. Yeah, yeah, it sure was. My goodness, we I'm getting old. Oh, my gosh. Okay, hello. Let me see who else is coming in. Did I miss you? Do you miss acting? What do you like? What? Did you not like? No, I do not miss acting. Um, I don't really uh, miss acting, but I kind of just, I'm actually a homebody. I'm a home person. So I don't like to necessarily be like out there. And that's another reason why this is like my first time doing this since I signed up with YouTube been like, you know, 15 years ago. But um, no, I don't really care to um, act anymore um, because I don't, I, you know, I don't care to be in front. I did do some directing. So I enjoy being behind the scenes. 
I enjoy doing that. But as far as like, oh, I need to be in front of people and oh, I miss acting that way. Not necessarily. I don't I don't care for that. I do. I did love the studio audience. That was fun. I like to make people laugh and, uh, you know, get touched or what have you. And um, but, yeah, it, it was it was fun at the time. I didn't necessarily want to continue it as I got older, you know, because I wanted to do other things. I'm the type of person that I like doing a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, I spent time and for actors, you know, for especially child actors, it's almost fascinating to do something outside of Hollywood. You know, whereas you have a lot of people that they want to be actors and they want to they want the fame. Oh, I want to be an actor. Oh, I want, now it's YouTube. I want to be a YouTube star. Oh, so but um, people, um, you know, come to. Hollywood and they come to California to be uh to be an actor and they're they're fascinated with that. For me, I got discovered, so I kind of it was I stumbled upon it. So it's like the reverse. So I'm more I was more excited being an EMT, uh, you know, going to EMT school and working on the para in the in the paramedics with the paramedics as an EMT on the ambulance and going around and giving people CPR. That was fascinating for me. So it wasn't really the acting because I kind of had already been there, done that as a child. So that's why when people say, why don't you go back to that? I'm like, back, you know, it's like I did that for like 25 years, almost 30 years, you know. So um, total opposite. And I don't think people really understand it. They they think that, oh, you know, you should go back to that. But, you know, the, the grass is not necessarily greener on the other side. Um, but it was fun. I totally loved it. You know, if somebody said, hey, we want you to be in this role, I would be like, what time, where, where, where you want me to be? But I'm not like looking for it. <coughs> All right, let's see what else we got here. Um, any funny fam, funny, I'm losing my voice. See that I got my T here. Any funny, oh, <laughs> you see how when you get old like this. <laughs> um, any, we say, oh, you got to say water bucket too. I'm just seeing that. Um, okay, let me calm down. Hold on a second. A uh, funny family matter story. Not really, you know, as far as the actors that were in it, like Darius uh, McCrary and Jaleel and everybody, they were, um, I've known them for years. I've known Jaleel since he was a um, really little, little, little kid. He's a little bit younger than me. So it was fun just uh, working opposite uh, Jaleel and the whole crew. N uh, nothing in particular that stands out to me about that show. I just like being goofy and being crazy and was only supposed to be on that show uh, for, uh, one time. And they, they, you know, they gave me a little contract to come back for 13 out of 22 shows as weasel. And I just had fun doing that. It was, it was great. I loved it. And I still love sharing pictures. I, anything having to do with anything nostalgic, not just with me, but with anybody. I love to share photos and pictures and I love everything about my, my childhood as far as acting and different things like that. But um, it was it was definitely fun. Oh, Rachel, that's right. Rachel, 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 Rachel. Uh, let me see what other questions that we have. Do you miss acting? I read that already. Were you and Gary Coleman, recipes, good friends and kids growing up? Yes, we were. We were friends growing up. I did have sleepovers and love to go over his house and play with his trains and everything like that. And and did you guys hang out off the set? Yes, we did. Gary loved laser tag. That was one of the things that he loved. And you know, I would hang out with him. And then, you I, you know, I got my little recognition, you know, when I was a child during that time. It's like as I got older, it was like when I was younger, it was like, oh, my God. You know, and then I started getting a, a little bit older. It was like, hey, what's happening? Dude? I remember you for the show. And then when I started getting older and older, <laughs> then it was like, you look familiar. So <laughs> then it was then when I got older, 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 <laughs> then it's like, do I did I go to school with you? So and then that's, you know, so now it's like. Nothing. <laughs> but the funny thing about it is that because it's Hollywood and, and I live in California, but I live like 80 miles outside of outside of Hollywood. But if I go when I went to Oklahoma, <laughs> that that uh, Rachel, that was funny. When I went to Oklahoma, um, that was hilarious because I had you know, I was in the library one time and it was a, a Caucasian gentleman like right in front of me reading the Op Oprah magazine. And I was like, I thought that was really weird because he looked like he was ready to go. Um, horseback riding or something. He had the cowboy hat. And then he just looked at me. He was like, wait a minute. I know you. You're that little boy. Aren't you done from different strokes? <laughs> I was like, what? How am I? So in Oklahoma, and like anytime I go outside of California, people still look, recognize me. I'm like, what? I didn't know that. I didn't know that was me. He's like, you know, so it's that, that type of thing. But California is like, oh, everybody sees everybody. You know, one time I was at the gas station 
and I saw uh, Serena Williams getting out. She was in like a Lamborghini, and she was she didn't know how to even pump the gas to her car. And I was like, "Hey, Serena!" She was like, "Hey!" And and she was like, and "I was like, you need some help." She's like, "No, I I got it. I think I got it. I got. It. I, I think." I'm like, "Wow!" I was like, "But only in Hollywood you see stuff like that." But as far as LA and recognition and people coming, it's not really a big deal out there because you'll you'll see. You know, all you have to do is just go to Malibu. You'll probably see all kind of people just, uh, you know, walking and running around and stuff like that. But uh, good to see you here. Who else we got? Uh, let me see. I was in a band with you at John Barrow's with Mr. Cooper. Uh, were you in the drum section with me? Because I was playing timpanis and I was so into drums. Let me put my glasses up. This glare is like, you can see all the lights and everything. But, um... Yeah, that's great. Yeah, John. Now, if you went to John Barrels with me, my goodness, that's that was a long time ago. But yes, wow, you said Mr. Hold on. Uh oh, wait, hold on. wait a minute. Hold on. I almost messed up. I almost see. I'm so wild. I'm almost hit the thing and turn everything off. But uh, did you say Mr. Cooper? Wow, when you said Mr. Cooper, that just brought back memories because I remember Mr. Cooper. Wasn't he the black man that was in the in the music uh, section or something like that? Let me see if I can go in here because this glare is just like. Anyway, this is my office here. This is where I work every day. Uh, Mr. Cooper. Yeah, yeah, that was that was funny uh, uh, because I got to learn. I was that's when I was into Rush, the group Rush. I love Rush. Um, I had a the, I don't know if you remember, but the drummer in in the orchestra in that class, his name was Gilbert. He was a Hispanic guy and he totally got me into, I was into drums already, but he got me into drums and he got me into Rush. So YYZ, Red Barchetta, Limelight, all of those songs I know by heart. It's like I can play them all on the drums. It's like, oh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Neil Peart was my favorite drummer. He just passed away not too long ago. God bless him. But um, YYZ with that drum solo. Oh, I love Rush. That, I mean, that's all I listen to. Rush, 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 Rush. Red Barchetta. Next, oh, let me see. I was in the trumpet section. I was. Oh, you were in the set. You were in the trumpet section. Okay, good, good. All right. Anybody else got any questions? Let me see what else. Yeah. All right. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of break down what I'd like to do, and you know, if you guys have a question or it's, I know some people are coming in and out, and I'll I don't know how long I'll go for because um, I can talk y'all ears off, y'all's ears off, as my wife would say, y'all's. That's what they say. Um, Rachel, you you probably know everybody says, well, Texas, I'm not sure what they say, but in Oklahoma is like everybody's like, y'all's my wife got me saying that. I, I never said that till I met my wife. I've been married 28 years before that. I would I would say you like Jersey, they say use, but in Oklahoma, they say y'all's or y'all. So now I say y'all every five minutes when I'm around my wife and not around my wife, but anyway, um. What was Conrad Bain like? Was he as funny as Mr. Drum? He's a very nice man, one of the nicest people, aside from Tom Selleck. The, um, um, Conrad Bain, uh, so he had a twin brother that looked just like him too, but he was a Canadian man too. And he's a very nice, spirited man, gentle, just like Mr. Drummond. Um, and of course he had just this charisma about him where he had this dry, by humor that would just you know come out and it, he was really i miss a lot i miss gary i miss dana it's like everybody's leaving i miss nidra volt she passed away she played adelaide the maid i remember these people vividly in my life such great childhood memory i love love my childhood memories from from those shows of uh, charlotte ray i remember when she i think she had just left to, to do Facts of Life, and the set was like next door. And that's one, one thing I loved about growing up as a child actor on the set. So whenever I was there on the, sh on the shows or different strokes, what have you, you could literally just go like next door, go through one door soundstage and just literally go right a foot away and open up another door and go in and it would be a whole nother atmosphere, be a whole nother show. So way back in the days, I would... um. Always go to the one day at a time set because of Valerie Pertinelli. That's why I went to the next set and I would just watch them rehearse. And I was about maybe eight years old, nine years old. And it, but it was so fun. I love Hollywood. I love uh, growing up on on uh, around the set and, you know, just just in Hollywood. It's just really, really great. As I got older, you know, uh, before I came to California, I actually wanted to be a doctor. 
Um, and so that was my goal that, I mean, I think I might've posted something years ago when I was little, they did a, a interview with me and I was kind of like doing a lot of guest appearances at the time. And I think it was right on magazine. I'm not sure which magazine it was one of them. And they, um, said, so you like acting? And I was like, yeah, I love acting. This is fun, but I want to be a doctor. You can see it like from way back in 1982. I was like, wanting to be a doctor. Not just any doctor. I wanted to be an OBGYN. Obstetrician gynecologist. I was willing to go through all this. I don't know. It was just something about delivering babies that I just love, like bringing babies. Once in a while, you, you guys will see me posting like little baby pictures on Instagram and people think they think it's like my child. I'm like, no, no, no. I don't actually say anything, but it's like, I love little baby pictures. I love sharing that. Mr. Cooper played the sax. I read that already. Let me see. Okay. We say y'all and fixing to, yes, I lived in, actually I lived in Georgia for a year before, right before I came to California. So by way of South Bronx, my mom took my sister and I to Georgia, Macon, Georgia, and I have family in Macon. I love to, would love to go back to Macon and visit my family. Um, so I have a lot of family down there, and that's what we say. Fi they fixing, we fixing the, not fixing, we fixing up. You always got to put at that extra duh. We fixing up. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. Okay. No idea what was uh, channel about. No idea what this channel about. Never seen anything, but I'm interested. What you all talking about? Somebody's coming in. I don't know where they're coming in from, but no, this is my first two um, reading something. Dev Boss. This is my first YouTube live session. So I don't know how I'm just learning YouTube. Uh, I'm a very chatty person, as you already know. I have a lot to share about life, about just, I've been so through so much. I have so much wisdom to share, especially relationships. I want to talk about relationships because there are a lot of people out there and I see it all the time. I'm like, they just got married already. They're breaking up already. What happened? You know, so I'm like, I see things and people are looking for love. Oh, uh, Rachel, you may have heard of this song. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for love in many faces. And I can't sing. Never can cry and open for sure. But that was a song. Look, people are looking for love in all of the wrong places. And people now would, would you know, sometimes I just find it fascinating that, fascinating that people, they, um, they don't really cherish marriage. It's almost like, don't get married. If you're not sure, don't get married. If you're not sure about him or her, just hold out, but don't go through the whole vows. But do you understand the purpose of a vow? I mean, vows are very, very, it's a serious thing. It's not nothing to be playing around with. Now, there's, don't get me wrong. There's sometimes you're justified for just, you know, divorcing. I mean, you don't want anybody just beating you up all the time. So maybe you didn't know. I can understand certain things in certain times, you know, when, when you know, you, it's just you got to get away, you know. But for most of the time, some of the things I'm hearing where people are irreconcilable, some of the things that they're breaking up over, I'm like, really? Damn, wow. Did they really love that person? What happened to death? Did to death do us part? What happened to this this stuff? I don't understand. So, but you know, that's me. But at the same time, I think I have some good news for those that are looking for the right person. I only knew my wife for barely not even two months. I think I might have seen or saw her uh, once or twice. We went on one date and a half. Okay, and I got married at twenty one and never looked back. Been married for twenty. 28 years, I almost said 21, 28 years. Sometimes you'll just know that you know that you know. And when you, everybody's looking for love, but you know, the key, I got some keys for you. It's when you actually stop, when you stop looking for love, that's when you find the right one. So, but that's tough because everybody wants to be loved. We all want to be loved. And so sometimes we feel that that opposite, you know, sex of the person, uh, that other spouse or future spouse or mate or person, we, we're looking for that connection. And sometimes that may, may or may not be the best thing to be looking for. And we'll, 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 maybe we'll talk about that another, another time. Maybe I'll do some videos and I would love to share it and maybe some, do some, not necessarily live, but I'll, I'll, you know, we're, we'll touch on that probably would be a lot shorter than <laughs> now because I'm already 41 minutes into this. And I feel like, it's been two minutes. Okay. Um, let me see if we have any questions. Anybody have any other questions? We'll probably go another 10, 15 minutes and we'll wrap it up.
And let me see if I can I can see. I'm trying to like I have to, you know, I was watching videos on like how to get the glare out of your um, you know, your from your eyes, because I want I want you guys to at least see that I'm I'm trying to look at you guys and 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 you know chat and stuff, but this glare thing kind of throws things off. But I may have to turn some of these lights off. You know, it's hard, it's tough to light black folks too, you know, because black folks, you know, we need some, we need our light. Now I might be looking a little bit too bright right now. Let me see. Um who are your favorite singers? Oh, or your favorite rappers? I have a lot of favorite singers. I got a great Nina Simone story. I would love to talk about one day because I can go on and on and on. But um, Nina Simone, I absolutely love Nina Simone. I got to spend the whole night over Nina Simone's home. And she lectured me for about eight or nine hours all night about eating right and health. And I just wanted a Big Mac. Miss Simone was like, no, you're going to eat these healthy nuts all night. But I got a Nina Simone story that I just, oh, I love Nina Simone. That's one. Erica Badu, I love Erica Badu. I love Bossa Nova. That's pretty much my favorite after gospel. I love Bossa Nova. So, Javon, I love Javon. Um, so, Tim May Maya. Love Tim. Uh, Gilberto. I love uh, Gilberto Gil. I love him. Bossa Nova is pretty much my favorite, my favorite genre right now, uh, as well as lo-fi hip hop. I love lo-fi hip hop. I love sharing photos. Uh, when I was doing a lot of photography lately, I've been adding music to my pictures and I actually love that. You'll see like sometimes I'll post something on Instagram or uh, Instagram story or what have you. And you'll see that I'm adding music to it, but I love, I love, um, I love, uh, Bossa Nova and Samba Rock, like, uh, Trio Mocato. I love them. I love, I went to go to Brazil. Uh, next question. You used to be a church preacher. That is exactly right. Uh, I spent eight years of my life pretty much outside of Hollywood. I was in the ministry. Seeing therefore we have here this ministry. Um, I was, yes, I went to uh, uh, Bible school um, for uh, four years. I completed four years of Bible school and learned about pastoring and the Bible because I just had a desire to know God at the time. And then after that, I spent another four years actually starting a church and pastoring a non-denominational church. And I had a wonderful time time uh, uh, with the church. It was hard work. Uh, of course, like me being the extremist that I am, I went just overboard. I was like, you see my energy now? I was like that every day with just all the people that joined my church. I was there for everybody. I was like, we moved. I left Hollywood, went to North Hollywood and moved upstairs from the church. People were knocking on the door at three o'clock in the morning. I was like right there for them. The only thing is that I was so much there for them. I got sick and burnt out. <laughs> so I wasn't expecting all that. It's like, it's like, you know how you, you know, your, your, your spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So I was doing so much because I just wanted to help, help, help. And I literally had to learn that, hey, you need to slow down. And when I say sick, just basically exhausted, just exhausted. And, you know, um, I just remember getting up in front of everybody and I was doing my sermon. And I, I was one of them ministers where you, like I am now, what they call what they call long winded. <laughs> so I don't even know how my uh, 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 members even put up with me, I guess, because. They were sponges. And those are the type of people that really I've worked really well with, like to, to help people that are, you know, I I would, uh, you know, certain children. I'm really like I can just see everything. that's like my daughter's like this, like everything that I tell her, she's like eating it up. Really? Yeah. OK, I want to do that. Yes. All right. Let's go. And I'm like, let's go. Where you? you learn something. All right. Then there are other people, other kids, you know, they just like. You know, they're doing that. So it just depends on the person. But. Um, I was a locomotive, you know, and so I would get up and uh, one day I just was ministering and 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 I was, I went down like this, not that I was going to faint or pass out. And I just saw blood coming out of my nose. I'm like, what is going on? I was just, just exhausted. I was, I think, um, you know, they're 52 weeks out of the year. I, for four years straight, except one Sunday, I did not miss a Sunday. In other words, I was there. For my people. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
um, every single Sunday for four years straight, except the last two Sundays when I was like, but you would think, take a vacation, you know, relax, it's okay. You don't have to be there every Sunday. You know, it was a young church, so I didn't have a lot of people I could really trust or be responsible for bringing a message to people, you know. And so I did have a couple of classmates from ministry school that came in um, and they were able to help me. But that was like two times out of like four years. And, it, you know, I had a wonderful time. I just didn't. My body I couldn't handle it. You know, it's like my spirit was there, but I couldn't handle it. So I had to learn to like slow down, you know. And so um, then for like after the church, after we, I stopped the church, I said, you know what? We just have my wife and my children, or at least my daughter wasn't born that quite yet, but my son was. And I said, we just need to be a family right now, everybody. And a lot of people were hurt. Um, and then we just, I just stopped the church and we went off and, you know, bought a home and just spent time to ourselves. No acting, no, none of that. And it was great. Okay. Let me see if I have any more questions, but yeah, I did pass through a church. Uh -huh. um, I love your relationship advice. Yes. I want to talk about relationships. Cinnamon and feeling good, Bob. Okay, feeling good, Bob. I'm not sure who to need to send a moment with some peace. Yes, uh huh. I'm a preacher's daughter. I know you're a preacher's daughter. I saw that, Rachel. I'll, you know, because I, you know, I, oh, when, when I first saw you come on, I almost like forgot your name, like your name, name, because, um, I'm so used to seeing Avery fan, and I think on your Twitter it says, um, um, like I'm not I forgot the, the the baseball player's name, but it's like not that Avery or something. I forgot what you said, but it's this Avery, and I had to look him up like which Avery she's what is why is everybody getting upset with her for this wrong Avery here? So I think when I see your see you come up, I don't think Rachel, I think even though I know your name is Rachel, I think Avery. So that's that's why I couldn't remember. I was like, what I know this woman. Thank you so much for doing this. Really appreciate it. Steve Avery. That's right. Steve Avery. All right. So how many? We got seven people here. I see seven people coming in and out. That's great. Anybody have any questions? Any more questions? So what I'd like to do and what, you know, maybe there might be some questions, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to do some, some more, um, some videos. I want to do like some, you know, maybe like 10 to 20. I hope I can. So I just have to cut myself off or something, but I would like to cover a lot of different topics. That's what I like to do with this uh, new YouTube channel. Um, is And like I said, when I turned 50, it kind of like was when I had an epiphany, like, you know, it's okay to don't worry about your teeth. I, I'm still getting my teeth worked on. I was embarrassed about that. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm a home person. So I didn't, you know, I didn't really want to like I'm just, you know, just, I don't know. I just wasn't ready to really present myself. I'm, I'm still, look, I got man boobs. I don't want to get, you know, how you think like this? Because in where in the field that I'm in, you know, and I'm glad things have changed now. People are taking their makeup off and, and, and they're in the bed now on Instagram. So people are, you know, what I call keeping it real now, which I think is just great. And that's what I'm realizing that it's not always about what's on the outside is what's coming out of you and how you can help people, you know, and how you can, some people just want to see how you're doing, you know, um, whether they're on television or not. So there may be some of you that may have a friend or an old family, well, old family, <laughs> that's not the word, the good way to put it, but I mean, a, a family me member that you haven't seen in a while and they may, you know, you never know what people are going through and it's okay to pick up the phone or, maybe even a text just to say, you know, hey, how you doing? So, and that's how I feel like with me that there's a lot of people, they see me type and they see me online. And I have a lot of family members too, you know, all the, in, like I said, in Georgia, but in New York, you know, I was born in the South Bronx for the Apache Bronx. All right. So, you know, you know, I could get there, you know, but I'm not going to get there tonight because I'm in a different type of mode. But um, and so, you know, people, want, they want to um, just see how you're doing. And it's just so sad because it seems like every, um, you know. Oh, by the way, I'm looking at you see all of the I sell posters. You know, that's one of the things that I sell, among a lot of other things. But one of one thing I specialize is uh, being an online retailer. And I I have sold thousands and thousands of posters over the last six years. And you would think I would have one poster like back there. <laughs> I still haven't put anything up. So that's really weird. <laughs> I, I have a, a Kobe poster over here. But I, you know, I haven't even had a chance to really decorate, you know, because I'm always working. But um, yeah, so what you gotta do is you gotta start reaching out um to people. And I know what it's like to be there 
at somebody's deathbed because shortly before I got into doing my online business, I was actually in going to school. I had to kind of start all over again. My goal was to be a counselor. Uh, that's the reason why I went to ministry school um, for four years. Unfortunately, the school did not get accredited. So I was like, ah, oh, and everybody thought it was going to get accredited and I was going to get my um, degree. And all of a sudden, I don't know, something went just didn't, it just didn't work out. So I literally had to go right. I had to go back to start all over again and, and go to like a regular, like junior college. And my goal was to get into social work. At first I was going to go to film school, but I said, no, I want to do, cause I like to help people. And so I spent just off and on um, some, I've been like in school, some 30, <laughs> 30 years, just because I was working as an actor, it wasn't like, oh, I just don't want to go to school. It's just that I was working as a child actor up until like maybe 30, 30 something. I forgot. 2008, I think I might have been 38. I don't know, something like that. But um, so I was always working in and out. Every time I would try to like, oh, I'm going to I want to get my degree. I would get an acting job and it would just just I don't want to say mess things up, but it would just stop that. So over the course of maybe 25 uh, years uh, or more, um, I was always trying to graduate to either be a social worker. I think I changed my major like five or six times. Um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to be a doctor, a psychologist, uh, uh, a history major. Uh, it was fun because I, I'm into a lot of different things. <laughs> it's just that I'm excited about a lot of different things. So I just couldn't narrow it down. But I finally narrowed it down to social work and psychology because I figured it would be a nice balance to the to the spiritual side of things. Uh, you know, I was at one point just, oh, everything was just, the Lord, Lord, Lord. <laughs> so, so that's one thing about me. I was super religious back in the early 90s. You're talking about Fox News. Oh, my goodness. Fox News. People don't understand Fox News. Now, let me tell you something about Fox News to all my Republican friends out there. I have a lot of Republican friends and, and Democratic friends, and I am now an independent. I've been on both sides of the fence. So now I don't get too much into politics. But um, there was a time where, you know, Fox News is like, you know, like watching a movie for me is like 24 hours a day. It was like Fox, 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 Fox News. Now, oh my God. <laughs> you know, but God bless them. I still respect and I love everybody. I don't I don't hold anything against uh, uh, anybody. But at one point, you know, you see both sides of it. And so now I'm kind of like I like to call myself right in the middle. So I, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I don't really like to get into politics, you know, too much. You know, every time I do that, I get in trouble. And I notice Miss Rachel don't get into politics. And I like that about you because you keep it out. You keep that out. Keep it out. And sometimes it's OK, but it's right now it's so much anger and chaos and, you know, on both sides. And the way I look at it is like we're all human beings. We're all people. You know, I'd like to figure out why um, people think the way they do on both sides. You know, I don't believe in the extreme stuff. So there's a lot of people on the extreme side. Oh, no, you're going to go to hell. <laughs> And then there's the other side where it's like, uh -huh, I think um, Ronald Reagan's son is like, oh, you know, I'm not afraid of going to hell. So I'm like, hey, which way? It's like, you know, so I try to stay right in. I don't go to the left, far left or to the far right. I try to stay right in the middle because when I'm in the middle, I can look at both sides, you know, with love. And I can say, OK, I see where they're coming from. I see. I think I can understand what they're coming from. And then I can't understand what, and then like I said, oh, I see where they're coming from, but then I don't understand. So I stay in the middle. And that's what keeps me sane. Because if I didn't, I would be upset right now. You know, I'd be really upset, you know, about a whole lot of issues, you know, on both sides. But anyway, that's another story. We'll talk about that. Maybe I'll do a, a, a YouTube video or something like that, but maybe a 10 minute. I want to try to keep my videos. Um, as far as uh, like some of the stuff, I'll probably be getting back to editing and stuff like that. I used to be an editor. I edited my first two films and I'll be probably doing something, maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes or something like that. Not like this. This is kind of like an introduction type thing to where maybe once a week or once a month. I don't know how, how often I'll do this to where people that just want to connect with me live they can come in and we just talk. And then some people, because I know some of you are on the East Coast, you know, you could just come in and say hello and you know, and, and I'll try to see if I can ask a question to you. Sometimes it's good to put a face, you know, um, with, you know, I because I'm always online. I'm like, I'm online 24 hours a day. I have to, but I have customers. Okay. So I hope you guys are enjoying this. It's uh, been 56 minutes. My goodness, has it been that 
long. It feels like two minutes to me here. Uh, do you still talk to Will? No, I don't talk. If, if you, I think you're talking about Will Smith. No, I don't talk to Will. Um, I, if, if I saw him, I'd be like, hey, Will, Alfonso. And if I do talk to anybody, mostly it's probably online. So everybody is doing their thing. You know, they're grinding and hustling and COVID. Everybody's trying to get back into the you know business and swing of things. And and in the meantime, I work from home. So I I am an internet entrepreneur. I this is my new job now. And I absolutely love it. If I can tell you guys anything, if you need to, and not just I, I don't even like the word side hustle. People say side hustle. For me, it's my main hustle. <laughs> okay. So and I love it. I totally love it. But for you, it may be a, something on the side that you can do. I'm telling you, you should do something on the internet as far as income. And it's just amazing um, the things and, and the, the experiences that I've had um, just, just interacting with a lot of people from literally all over the world. Um, and it's fascinating to me and I love it. And I can still be creative. I can still design things. I did, I made two, I did two short films where I directed, I wrote and I edited it. And then I did one feature, an hour and 96 minute or 96 minute film. And it's in, it was in all the Targets and the Walmarts. And it, it was a wonderful cast. And I had a wonderful time doing that. It was very tough. But it was like so much energy I put into that one movie. It was like, oh, you know. And then when it came out, it was on Netflix. And it had some pretty good reviews on Amazon. And and then somebody was like, oh, I didn't like it. It was OK. And, I, and that just crushed my <laughs> I spent the whole four years trying to get this film together and off the ground and, and, uh, you know, and it just was like, oh, and I was like, and then so much of my family just took so much out of us. It took me literally four years and took, I had to negotiate with, with the distributor and get extra money just to finish the film. And then when I got the money to thought I was going to finish the film, lights were cutting off on the set and things were breaking and we had to get new stuff and that was costing money. And, we were going into overtime, and when you go into overtimes, the actors got to get paid more. It was just, oh my gosh! Now I get to be creative with different designs and art, and it's like that. So I'm constantly putting out different creative things, and this is another creative outlet for me, which I'm totally excited about. Let me see. We got new people coming in to say hello. Some of uh, some of I saw some people that were probably looky loose coming in and out. Maybe no. Can I see people coming in and out? We're about an hour into it. I'm glad uh, that you guys have stopped by to visit me. Okay. I see Raywin Harris is in. How you doing, buddy? Somebody said, am I Gary? Oh, I thought you were going to say, are you Gary Coleman? I was going to say, no, I'm not Gary Coleman. Um, are you Gary Coleman with best friends? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, we were friends on and off the camera. Okay. So, okay. I see somebody said, po uh, politics are divisive. Yes, Iceman. Not... Uh, Uniting, right? Full of lies and half truths. Yes, that's true. It's sad to say, uh, MAGA was a hate movement. Yeah, very much. They, you know, they of course they say the same thing about Antifa and different things like that. I like to get into politics, maybe on a different, maybe not in this type of. Because you know, one thing about me is I don't do drama. I don't like negativity. That's one of the things I just. Oh, I don't like. It's just that it just. I, I don't. It's not good for their spirit for me. Maybe some people, I guess they like to get up there and start arguing and maybe they want attention, but negative energy, I cannot deal with. I don't deal with negative energy. I just run as far as I can from it. Anything negative, I'm like, oh, you know, um, if there's some, you could just feel it even on the internet, even on um, the, um, you know, Facebook and Instagram. As soon as I see somebody, they try to type something that's just negative energy. I could just feel it. And I'm just like, oh. And I don't even get into it with people. It's like, if you find yourself not being able to discover my Facebook page, it's like, okay, there's a reason for that. <laughs> all right. I think you might know what that reason is. But anyway, all right. So um, any other questions? All right. Okay. So we're hour into it. Now people are, people are coming. I don't want to say people are coming in late, but they see, oh, it's, he's live. Anyway, so yes, what I'd like to do, and I'm going to start get, I'm going to get going with this because um, I'm very familiar with the internet. I'm not familiar as much with the with the inner workings and the interface with YouTube. I'm getting used to that. But as far as like putting stuff out, 
things that you know I can I can say to encourage you to help you subscribe. And I see this all the time. <laughs> I see these young people like, oh, subscribe to my page. Look, I guess this is the thing now. Everybody's got to subscribe to my page. But I don't know if you see a subscribe button, but you know, you guys know how to subscribe and stuff because I plan on coming back. I'm already excited right now. It's just that I can, you know, I don't do drugs. I don't get high. <laughs> so, so, so it's like, this is natural energy here. And so with my family, it's like, dad, you know, my daughter, they love me. And they, and my wife is, God bless her heart. She's just the sweetest woman in the world. Imagine a guy like me talking like this, like all the time. And she's just, she just has that listening ear. She's like, mm -hmm. no, I understand, honey. And she's like that. My daughter's like that, dad, dad, slow down. <laughs> okay. I have homework. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Go, go, do your homework. We'll talk about it later. So I'm like that with my daughter. Um, but you know, it's just that, um, that's just how I am. That's just, I have a lot, you know, uh, I mean, well, <laughs> let me put it that way. I mean, well, and, and so now I'm realizing now, you know, you get, you know, reach out to other people. Maybe there may be somebody that may be watching me right now that you may be depressed or maybe you're going through some things in life. Maybe you don't even, don't even know who this black guy is talking to you or my background. Maybe you saw the live thing going off or something like that. And you said, let me go check this guy out or whatever. Um, and maybe, I, I don't think it was an accident. You just never know. But I'm here. Just know that I'm here. If you have any questions for me, um, don't be afraid to email me. My email address is ross.shabar at gmail. I'll try to respond as quickly as I can. It will be a little bit tough sometimes, but if I don't respond, you know, make sure that you, you come on to the live. I'll try to do this frequently. Maybe next week we'll have a different topic. Maybe we'll talk about relationships. Maybe we'll kind of get like a something, maybe we'll be a little bit more focused. Uh, and so when you, you'll probably see, uh, God willing, I'll be able to start posting some shorter videos uh, around different topics to where you'll be able to just, okay, I understand that or blah, blah, blah. So it won't be as long as this because number one, I don't have too much time to be making a lot of long movie like videos, even though I can go on and on and on. Um, but you know, I'm going to think of different things that I, or things that I would like to share with others that may benefit you. It could be with your career. It could be maybe with finances, online business. I absolutely love online business. This is what I do 20. It literally changed my life. People say, well, won't you go back to acting? Mm -mm -mm. No, no, no. If you only knew my acting buddies, if you only knew what is going on. So I try to be low key and everything, but I absolutely love being online. This is just amazing. The technology that's going on right now, isn't it? I mean, don't you guys think this is like fascinating? I could speak to you live. I see other people that I admire and some of my celebrity friends, they're online and I see them and on Instagram and the people are going live. I'm in their kitchen like uh, with them cooking. And I'm like, oh, this is just wonderful. My wife, she loves one of the twins, the, the Tia and Tamara girls, but I think Tamara and her husband, and that inspired me. I was like, honey, we need to cook something. Oh my goodness, this is great. Take notes, you know, this is great. So I love that we're this that we're in. Some people don't like this because they're like, oh, they're taking over. We're not gonna have any freedom of speech and, and we, they're just taking over. But I think it's a good thing. I mean, there's a good and bad to everything, I suppose. But I like the fact that I can come into your home. You can come into my home and we can talk and share things and discuss things. You know, I know a lot of you may have uh, grown up with me. Maybe you've seen me on Facebook or Instagram. Not exactly sure, but this is a great way to get in touch. Now, I'm not a phone person, so this is what I love about this. I don't really talk on the phone. Isn't that amazing? And the reason why, like I said before on Instagram a couple of days ago, Instagram, um, I don't talk on the phone because imagine me, you talking to me on the phone and I'm like this, you know? No, don't, don't get me wrong. I do listen. I do listen to my wife. And my daughter, there's a time where I do slow down a little bit, but for the most part, I just have a lot to give, you know, and I do get a little quiet, but I'm like the type of person that, you know, in, like in the morning, I'm like, <coughs> I'm up, time to get busy, let's go, you know, this is just a go, just a go getter, you know, and it's almost like, Lord, why did you make sleep? Can you explain that to me? So like, why do I got to go to sleep? Oh, your body needs rest, you know, so I have to <laughs> eat, I have to eat, my goodness, what am I? I gotta eat. Oh man! All right, give me the yeah, give it to me. All right. <laughs> so you know, but that's part of life, and it's nothing wrong with that. That's natural. These are things that we we you know. There's a reason for everything. We need nourishment, but I'm here 
for nourishing the spirit, like chicken soup for the soul. You know, I like to I like to help you. So um, let me see how much time we have. We've gone over an hour. We're probably going to wrap it up. If you have a few more questions, uh, let me know now because I'm probably going to sign off in a minute. But I'm excited to to have my first session here with you, uh, and I I'm really enjoying it. And I'm going to see if I can do a little editing. I think I can save this for those that maybe missed it the first time. You'll be able to come in, and maybe it'll be on my YouTube channel. I think you can save this, and um, maybe I'll do some Photoshop work and stuff like that, and try to get my man boobs up, and you know, all kind of different things. We'll find out what's going on with that. Okay. And so, oh, I have been running, by the way. I've been, I can run over three miles now. I'm ready for my first 5K. I am working on that. I'm thinking 2022, I'll be ready. At first, I've been working out for six months now, or actually since September. That's probably about six months. But, uh, and so I want to run a marathon. At first, I was like, <gasps> marathon. When I first started, I was like, like, oh my God, how, how long have I been running? I'm like, one minute and 25 seconds. Oh, 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 now it's like, I can go three and a half miles. And it's like nothing. I'm working on my pace. I want to pick it up. And now I'm like, you know what? I think I want to win. I kind of want, I told my wife that. I was like, you know, I kind of want, like, I didn't even know I could run three miles at 50. I mean, there are people 90 years old running 20 miles. But I'm just saying for me, I was like, oh, I had to work my way up to that. So now I told my wife, I was like, you know, I think I kind of want to win this thing now. You know, I want to I want to win. <laughs> you know, like Yogi. I was like, I want to win this thing. So I'm working on marathon and now I just got to do some push-ups. Love the stash. Thank you. Love the stash. I asked my wife, I was like, oh, and my daughter, I was like, you should like to shave it off. I don't like, know, oh, keep the work my stash. My daughter's like that. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You keep the my yeah, can't wait for the next one. All right. Somebody subscribe. All right. Tell all your friends, everybody. So we're at uh, an hour and eight minutes. It's been fun. Uh, I'm excited to share more. I'm probably going to be working on my first video pre presentation. So when you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see all the videos that I posted from, like I told you, some of you may have missed it, but a lot of you, you may see uh, some of my, my acting. And this is, this is when maybe 12, 13 years ago, when I signed on to YouTube, I was trying to save the video from VHS, from my garage. And YouTube was the place to where I would upload uh, my, my videos in order to save it. And people have been watching. It. I've had over maybe 300,000 people or views from the last 13 years of these videos. And it's just been sitting there all this time. And people, I'm looking at the other screen here, but, uh, and people um, have been, have been watching and and, and watching some of my old stuff, you know, which is great. Now I would love to have some new stuff. I, I'm back on the small tube now. So I'm looking forward to uh, reaching out to some of you. Um, I'm going to try, like I said, to, to do some editing and maybe do some, just some informational stuff. It may be some fun stuff. Maybe it might even be me and my daughter doing something. I don't know. Just, just to have fun, appreciate life, um, uh, there are some family members of mine. They want to see what I'm up to. And it'll be fun because to me, it'll be like, kind of like Hollywood again. Like I get to kind of do some editing and TV stuff and have fun and joke. And I think it'll be great. So, um, I appreciate you guys from, for coming by and visiting me, subscribe to my page, tell your friends. I'll probably be telling everybody about this. Like I always do. I'll see you on <laughs> YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. I'm pretty much everywhere. Twitter as well. Um, getting ready to go back to work and I got a lot of shipping I got to do, um, but I'll try to stop by and maybe I'm not sure when I'll do the next live, but I will um, try to, um, to, to do this more often just to say hello and touch base. Okay. All right, guys. God bless you. I love you guys. Thank you for coming and giving me company. It's so lonely. No, I'm kidding. I do have a wonderful wife and daughter and my son. So um, be safe out there. Do we still need to wear a mask? I don't know. Do we? Oh, all right. Put that mask on just in case. I don't know what's going on. Be careful. All right. See you guys. Bye-bye.